Hello, I'm Atuba just now. Today is Friday. Hey, this is the first Friday in the month of May. Praise God. Hear me. The word of God is coming to you strong and he is building you up, getting you out of where you are to walk in the light with him. And you are going to see every sin, every negative thing in your life begin to clear out. <laughs> Do you believe that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. It is your words we seek. And we open our hearts to learn of you, Lord. Every truth is filling our hearts today. And I declare burdens are being lifted right now and yokes being destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now we are in 1 John chapter 2. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It says, My little children, from verse 1, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiator for our sin. Propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the whole world. Now notice it says, my little children. See, John is writing now. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Then he says, and if, so you are not supposed to sin, but just in case anyone sins, it's not over yet. Don't say, oh, I can't forgive myself. Why can't you forgive yourself? Ah, I thought I had passed this level. No, 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 no. If anyone sins, just in case you miss the mark, just you, in case you, you just, you know, like they say, fall out of grace, you know, whatever that means. You know what I'm talking about? He says, we have an advocate that is with the Father. Who's that advocate? Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And you see, he says, he himself. So we are not supposed to sin. But if anyone falls into sin, there's a remedy. Now that's the remedy he wants you to hold on to. But then he is not saying, watch, watch, watch. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch this now. Look at verse 3. It says, now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. What does it mean when you sin? We sin when you don't keep his word. When he gives you an instruction and you don't keep it, he says, look, you don't know him. So the reason you sin is because you don't know him. Because no one will know him. That's why he said in chapter 1, you can't say you have fellowship with him. And you can't say you know him without fellowship. How then did you know him? You don't know him. There are people who only know the Jesus in the Bible. They've not experienced the real Jesus. <laughs> and, and Jesus is not confined to the Bible. He is real. He is alive today. You can meet him. So, huh? Where? Oh, don't you know? <laughs> it's God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It says, By this we know that we know him if we keep his commandment. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandment, is a liar. See, your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is expressed by how much you keep his words. Now, you will not see Jesus as a person. Understand what I'm saying now? You will not know Jesus as a person. You will only know Jesus through his word. Get what I'm saying. I didn't say you only know through, you will only know Jesus through the Bible. I say you will only know Jesus through his word. What do I mean? His word? By him speaking to you. That is the only way you will know Jesus. Now, even the disciples that walked with Jesus when he walked on earth, do you realize that the moment he died and resurrected, they didn't know him again? 
Yeah, they did it. They had to now know him afresh. Every one of them. They had to know him afresh. Say how? They only recognized him when he spoke. They only recognized him through his words. That's because the moment Jesus rose from the dead, he didn't show up in the same face, in the same body, like they knew him before. Someone said, why? Why didn't he, you know? That's why Mary met him at the tomb. And she was looking at him, but she didn't know he was the one. She said, oh, sir, please. She thought, the Bible said she thought he was a gardener. Sir, please, if you can just tell us where you took his body to, we'll retrieve it. Just tell us. And then Jesus turned to her and said, Mary, she heard that voice. And she responded, Rabboni. Without like, hmm? She responded to that voice. The same thing with the disciples on their way to Emmaus. They were walking, discussing. And then this man came to meet them. And I'm like, oh, what are you guys talking about? Ah, yeah, this whole issue about Jesus. Say, what issues? Say, ah, are you new in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has happened in the last three days? <laughs> Praise God. And said, what? Say, come, who is this guy? And then they began to talk and talk, and Jesus began to instruct them and teach them. And like, hmm, 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 yes, hmm. And then they got to where he was supposed to. They said, no, it's late. Why don't you stay with us? Why? They were enjoying that conversation. You know why they were enjoying it? It sounded like somebody they knew. But, you know, I, I can just imagine, you know, him sharing with them, and they would turn and look at him like, uh, who's this guy? You know, he knows, uh, he's, he talks like Jesus, but uh, okay, well, <laughs> you know. And then they got to the house. When it was time to eat, he said, hey, before we eat, let's break bread. Ah, uh, the moment he took that bread and broke it, they knew no other person can do this. That's when they say, you are Jesus. <laughs> the Bible said that's when their eyes opened. Not because their eyes were veiled before. No, it was because Jesus did not appear in the form that they knew him. And it's deliberate. Now, guess what they said if you read that in the book of Luke. Now, when he left, they looked at themselves and said, how could we have been this foolish? He said, didn't our hearts burn when he was speaking with us on the way? <laughs> Do you understand? We should have known. Because the voice, yes, the voice. But we were not bold enough to say he is the one. The same thing, you know, when Peter and the other disciples, they said, look, I'm going back to fishing. John said, okay, I'll go with you. And then they were there. And Jesus came and said, children, do you have any meat? He said, ah, no, cast your net on the right side. And then they cast John, John looked at him and said, Peter, that's the master. The moment Peter heard that, the Bible said he jumped into the river naked because he was naked. Praise God. He jumped into the river and said, Kai, no, 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 no. I've, I've, I've just been a fool. So Jesus was always showing up with them. If you read the book of Matthew, the last chapter, when Jesus said they should come, over to meet him at the mountain. The Bible said the 11, and these were not the multiple disciples that he had. This was the 11 disciples. He told the 11 of them, just the 11 of them to come and meet him at the Mount of Olives. And then they went. The Bible said when they got there, they saw him. Some, they saw him and they worshipped him. When they worshipped him, the Bible says some of them doubted. Why were they doubting? They were wondering, is he the one? <laughs> you understand? Why? Because now you can only know him through his words. And I say, that's why I'm sharing this with you. Because this fellowship is by words. Not by words you read, by words you hear. If you don't hear that word, if you don't hear that voice, there is no fellowship, no matter how much you read. See? So he says, thank you, Jesus. Watch this now. He says, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him. Because you won't keep it if you don't hear it. 
So you can read it. Reading doesn't mean you can keep it. When you read it, you find out that you're struggling to keep it. But when you hear Allah Gaba Sayaba, listen, when the word of God comes to you, it empowers you, it emboldens you. That's the difference between this Christian and this other one. Why is this one working and doing well? And this one is not doing well. I'll tell you the secret. Two of them have Bibles. One is hearing it. One is reading it. That's the difference. The one who reads it is struggling to keep it. The one who hears it is gliding with it. That's the difference. So your life will not change until you begin to hear his commandments. Now, what does it mean his commandments? Not thou shalt not steal. No, 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 no. His words. His words. What he tells you to do. What he instructs you. You do. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this now, verse 5. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. If you can keep his word, you know, sometimes there are certain things the Lord has instructed you about personally. You know, you walk with God to that point where God will tell you, never borrow money from anyone. Never. I said, yes, sir. I won't. Just like he did to Abraham. He was the one that told Abraham, Abraham, don't take even a shoelace from the king of Sodom. And Abraham said, but, 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 you know, no. <laughs> but, but, I fought the war. I, I, it's supposed to be mine. He said, no, I don't want you to take. Said, okay. And he said, lift up your hands. Lift up. Say with me. Okay. I, Abraham, I, Abraham, declare, declare, I will not take, I will not take even a shoelace, even a shoelace from the king of Sodom. Now you've said this before me, keep it. Yes, sir, I will keep it. And then now he gets before the king of Sodom. And the king says, Abraham, thank you so much. You've done so well. You know what? You know, as the custom is, you keep the goods. Just give us our wife and our children. Abraham said, no, 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 no. I have lifted up my hand before the Lord Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take even a shoelace. From. When did he do that? When he met Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek was the Lord Most High. Yeah. But I said, go read it. Go read it. And then when you open it, Ask the Lord to speak to you about it. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that was what happened. So when the Lord begins to give you commands like that, people may not like you. I'm telling the truth. People may not understand you. The reason they won't like you is because they don't understand you. Naturally, people like what they can control, what they can relate with. The moment you begin to get into that realm where you are out of reach, you know what I mean? Nobody can tell what you're going to do in this situation. They, you, they, you begin to create that gap between you and them. Now, don't feel shame. Don't feel ashamed about it. Don't feel bad about it. See, don't let anything stop you from walking in the realm that God wants you to walk in. You know the reason? At the end of the day, even though people don't understand you, you will become their savior. I'm telling you the truth. But if you let them pull you down and you stay in their realm, then you won't be able to help them. And nobody's going to be able to help all of you. Someone has to go by grace up. And eventually... Be the one to help the others. If you keep your faith before the Lord as you see him. I pray today and this weekend, let the Lord open your eyes to know him. Let the Lord open your eyes to know him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.